The exciting thing about multi-serve is we see a lot of the same types of operations in multiple parts around the world. So the idea here in Hamilton is to identify best practices, bring people in from throughout the world to see how those practices will apply and then deploy those on a worldwide basis. We need to show our customers that we are one step above our competition and that uh, uh, this is a very positive way to, to do that. Uh, we're bringing people really from throughout the world, we're putting them on cross-functional teams, we're giving them uh, immediate training and application to both implement things that they've thought about for a long time and also experiment with some new tools. A good mix of different people in there, so you've got the operators, uh, mechanics, etc. who've got a lot of years experience, know the site inside out, but you've also got some people, and a bit like myself, who don't really know the site, but uh, perhaps know the process a bit better, who are able to contribute different things, ask questions that may not have been asked before, have different points of views. We've been here, I believe, like 50, 60 years, and there's a lot of the, uh, here. I've been hearing it all week, of, well, this is the way we've always done it, and um, this is something new. Uh, we expect it to be successful and I think it will open the door to try new, uh, better ways of doing things at the site on a, on a going forward basis. There, there may be reasons behind you to why you did it that way 20 years ago, but things have changed, but we haven't changed with it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take a look at the drop wall operations here, which is one of the core business processes for all the multi-serve operations. So we're taking a look at the layout, we're taking a look at the coordination between the crane, the loader, and the dump truck, and we're also taking a look at some of the maintenance and shift staffing options to see if we can really improve the output without adding any more people and equipment. When we looked at that, there seems to be uh, two or three major focus points. Uh, the one you can see going on behind us deals with uh, trying to separate the two cranes. You can see one at the other end and this one, and they were working uh, towards each other. So every time there was what we would call pit set up or any downtime that brought people into the work area, which it would essentially shut for the cranes down. So they're working on one pit on ball wrecking, and on the other pit, they're either working on setup or takeaway. So we're using some of the basic setup tools to see if we can keep one crane fully utilized and really improve the output. If we're successful, we should be able to get at least as much output with one crane uh, that we're currently getting with two cranes. We're changing pits, moving pit locations. We're um, getting our backlog cleaned up, which is good for the customer. And we're also coming up with a production plan. If you can get double the hours and double the production through, then you're going to double your revenue. And that's got a huge benefit. It's uh, Obviously for the company it's, it's extra money, but from a morale point of view, if you're having half the number of breakdowns and the machines running twice as well as it was before, then that makes everybody's life an awful lot easier. I really like the fact that you know we've set something out on paper, we've discussed it, and then we're actually implementing it. We're going to remove all this material out of here so we can bring that crane in here and create two pits where you can break. Because right now both cranes are facing each other and when one breaks down, this one has to shut down to repair this one. By doing this, they'll be independent of each other so when one goes down, the other one can still work. We've run roads that go down around the back end of this and uh, once we get that stabilized, the last section will be to, to dig uh, two work pits that we'll be performing the work out of, and they're, they're probably 100 feet by 30 or so feet deep. We've done a tremendous breakthrough, especially just by uh, talking about it, moving the cranes, uh, positioning material properly. It wasn't just a small feat, it was, it was a requirement to utilize equipment, move material, get the new pit set up. So I'm very impressed that uh, they were able to do all that in such a short period of time. You know what, going into it I was a little nervous. Now that I'm in the thick of things, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. Beginning of the week to the end of the week, there's a, a little more closeness and understanding that we all had the same goal, we're just approaching it a little differently, but we put it all together. I think that's been one of the wonderful things about Harsco is I've been, had the opportunity to really go around the world and visit many, many locations. And the strength of the people within the Harsco family of, of companies really is a core strength. And I think the tools are gonna, gonna fit perfectly. 
uh, this has to become our culture, this has to become our way uh, of doing our business and I, I think it will become second nature and so it's going to take work so that we get to a point where it does become second nature and I think the interest in the people uh, that have been involved so far uh, and just com comments I'm hearing from others, it will uh, in fact do that. As a result of this Kaizen, the two cranes now operate in separate pits so we can continue braking operations without interruption. This has doubled our production capacity from 6 tons per hour to over 12 tons. We've eliminated the need for overtime and expect to clear our backlog within a few weeks of the Kaizen. The team also implemented 11 safety ideas. In short, after one week, we're safer, more efficient and responsive and are better able to meet our customer needs.